Mr. President of the General Assembly, Mr. Secretary General, colleague permanent representatives, excellencies, delegates, allow me, Mr. President, to congratulate you on your astute leadership and management of the General Assembly during the current session. Your calm demeanor and steady hands lend to our deliberations an atmosphere of assurance and control that usually profits the multilateral process. Today, I stand humbly before this august house of plenipotentiaries with immense gratitude to all 193 members for the confidence they have reposed in me to serve as president of the 78th session, an undertaking that is both an honor and a privilege. I have been overwhelmed and yet at the same time buoyed by the extraordinary demonstrations of support, solidarity, and goodwill that have consistently accompanied me on this journey over several months. My heart is truly full, even as I remain keenly aware that being called to serve as President of the General Assembly of the United Nations constitutes a weighty responsibility. It is often said that education is the great liberator, lifting people up the social ladder and strengthening society in the process. Not only is that assessment valid, it is a truism. I exemplify that pattern. Having over the course of my career repeatedly found myself in places and called upon to, to undertake onerous responsibilities. Such experiences would not have seen the light of day had I not had great parents who appreciated the extraordinary power and potential of education, and moreover, having been part of a generation that benefited from an enlightened government policy that challenged and democratized the colonial practice, whereby education was, by state policy, reserved exclusively for the privileged, that is, only for those with the means to afford it. When, therefore, in the context of the SDGs, we postpone or neglect to offer support to the millions the world over who lack access to quality education, aren't we consigning them facelessly to an intergenerational cycle of poverty, degradation, and misery? from which they are hardly likely to emerge? It seems to me that the more pragma pragmatic choice would be to do all that we can materially to save those children and young people from near certain defeat, defeat of circumstance, by affording them, through education, the option of choice, and thus the capacity to self-actualize to their own benefit and to that of their communities and societies. I find this to be a compelling argument for an all-out effort come the forthcoming SDG Summit to recommit and re-energize action to complete and deliver Agenda 2030 and the SDGs, the empowerment of people everywhere through the removal of the shackles that constrain their growth and independence and deny them any possibility of creating their own success. The pursuit of policies that support and encourage investing in people and therefore in the creation of social capital in the medium and long term is arguably among the most effective strategies for promoting and achieving sustainable development. It is education that brought me to this place and ultimately to this podium. And I am so proud and gratified to have been born in a country, Trinidad and Tobago, that for almost 70 years has ascribed the highest value to education. Allow me, therefore, to express my profound appreciation to my minister 
Senator the Honorable Dr. Amory Brown, and through him to the government and people of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago for believing me worthy of shouldering this awesome responsibility as president of the 78th session of the General Assembly. Over the 40 odd years of my career as a diplomat, it never once occurred to me that I would find myself sitting as the president of the General Assembly. But as I look back, it was my good fortune to have been schooled by some of the finest, finest and most accomplished diplomats Trinidad and Tobago has ever produced. Foremost among them being the late Mr. Lennox Fitzroy Baller, former head of the Foreign Service of Trinidad and Tobago, a brilliant international lawyer, and a former member of the International Tribunal on the Law of the Sea, who tutored and indeed mentored several generations of professional Foreign Service officers, insisting always that the target must be excellence. I pay tribute to him and to several other distinguished masters of diplomacy whose dedication and work have left an indelible mark on Trinidad and Tobago. I am ever conscious of the sensitivity and weight of responsibility that serving as the President of the General Assembly imposes on the incumbent. In this regard, I commit to discharge the responsibilities of the office with transparency, accountability, vigor, and dedication, bearing in mind that all members have equal rights. On Trinidad and Tobago's admittance to the United Nations in 1962, Sir Ellis Clark, our first permanent representative, in making a comparison between our population and that of the international community, affirmed that we have, however, developed in our society tolerance, camaraderie, respect for the rights of others, and unswerving opposition to oppression, injustice, and racial discrimination. A love of liberty, a supreme faith in the dignity and worth of the human person, and belief in the value of cooperation. These principles will form the basis of my actions as President of the General Assembly. I will prioritize encouraging and facilitating meaningful dialogue in various formats in order to ensure that there is clarity of priorities and the strengthening of common purpose in the interests of coherence. It is my hope to bring forward, with your help and support, a renewed atmosphere of conciliation, cooperation, and shared commitment in addressing the many challenges and seizing every opportunity, however nascent, before the General Assembly. I will seek to enhance current approaches and adopt new ones with probable solutions as we endeavor to deliver, or at least, to strengthen the basis for delivering peace, prosperity, progress, and sustainability. I count on your support during the impending session and call for your fulsome engagement in good faith as we purposively accelerate our action towards the achievement of the sustainable development for the benefit of all. Permit me to end on a personal note by expressing my special thanks to my hardworking staff at the mission whose exceptional devotion to duty and professionalism is a matter of great personal pride and satisfaction. I should like to thank my six siblings for their unending love and loyalty, whom I know will say to me, don't think you're the president here. You are still the last. I nevertheless thank them for a lifetime of support and for being here with me today, either in person or virtually, to share this moment of jubilation. Thank you also to my lifelong friends from the class of 1973 of Woodbrook Secondary School, whose genuine friendship and love I can never get too much of. And finally, my grateful thanks to my dear wife, Joy, whose smile lights up my day 
every day, and whose love, support, and encouragement contributed in no small way to making this day possibly possible. Finally, I share with you a recent discovery, most interesting. The Latin translation of the words, all glory to God, is soli deo gloria, S-D-G. Perhaps, perhaps more than, perhaps more than a coincidence. Thank you, Mr. President.